This is a problem-solving screencast in Organic Chemistry 1 where we are asked to predict the product from a sequence of reactions. So we can approach a, a problem like this where we're given a starting material, which I'll abbreviate SM, starting material. We're treating that with a sequence of reagents and asked to predict what the product is going to be. We can analyze this as uh, four separate smaller problems that ultimately lead us to a final product. So in order to approach a, a problem like this, let's take it stepwise. So let's go ahead and redraw our starting material. And then in step one, which I'll abbreviate S1, we're treating with this reagent here BH3 THF. So in our, our algorithm of solving these type of problems, it helps to identify what the major functional group of the starting material is. In this case, we have an alkene, and it happens to be dye substituted. So we have a dye. substituted alkene and we're treating that with BH3 THF so this is borane tetrahydrofuran complex this is going to do a hydroboration of the alkene and remember that BH3 acts in a anti-Markovnikov electrophilic addition so what does that mean? The hydrogen of the borane is going to add to the most substituted carbon of the alkene. So mechanistically, how can we push arrows? We can show this carbon here is, is bonding to the hydrogen of the boron, and then this bond will break and then boron's going to be bonded to the less substituted carbon of the alkene. So this is an example of an electrophilic addition. So here's our hydrogen. There's the carbon and then here's where the, the boron adds. So that's the product of, of step one. This will go on to repeat itself uh, two more times. We'll end up with a trialkyl borane, which in step two, we're treating with basic hydrogen peroxide. So that will form sodium peroxide anion and that's going to do an oxidation where the boron is bonded to the carbon so essentially we're ending up with a primary alcohol at this point so now we have a primary alcohol now in step three we're treating with sodium hydride. It's important to verbalize what, what the reagent is. So sodium hydride. This is going to be a salt in which sodium bears a positive charge and then hydrogen bears a negative charge. So hydride means hydrogen with a pair of electrons and a negative charge. So this is going to act as a base and bases will abstract hydrogens and if you look at this compound you have a, a couple different types of hydrogen. So which one gets abstracted? Well it's going to be the one with the most acidic pKa and 
it's going to be the one bonded to oxygen. So this alcohol has a pK of around 15. So that hydrogen gets abstracted. The byproduct is hydrogen gas, which escapes the reaction. And we have an alkoxide anion. This bears a formal negative charge. The counter ion is then the sodium. So now we have an alkoxide. The oxygen is negatively charged, so it is a nucleophile. So in step four, we're treating with ethyl chloride. So nucleophiles react with electrophiles. How do we know which carbon is going to get attacked? Well, we, we use the periodic trend of electronegativity. Chlorine is delta minus. The carbon is delta plus. We have a oxygen bearing a negative charge. Negative is attracted to positive, so we're forming a carbon-oxygen bond there. And we're ending up with an ether functional group. So this is our final product. And overall, if you look at what we've accomplished, we've started with something that's relatively nonpolar. We've introduced a oxygen atom into the molecule, producing an ether that has polarity. So this has been a problem of predict the product from a sequence of reactions. If you take your starting material and then break it down into four separate steps, it becomes a little more manageable in predicting what the final product is.